Welcome to the next video on the remote Linux shell access through web interface. So in this video we're going to see about the VETI tool which enables us to have SSH shells through web interface. So if you want to learn more, stick with me. Hello and what's up guys, Medium Guy here and welcome to the next video in this mini video series where I'm trying to demonstrate the tools that enables us to make Linux shells through web interface, through our browsers and each tool having their own unique features. So in this specific video we're going to see about the VETI tool which is written in JavaScript language so without any delay let's get down to work so as you can see i am in the github repository page for the veti tool so as this stated over here it is a terminal in browser over http or https depending on what configuration you set so over here we've got the release sections that you can download for your use case and over here we've got a brief summary of how to install and make use of this tool so basically we can see that veti equals web plus tty which are related to linux shell sessions so the prerequisites for this tool to make use of it is node version plus 14 and make python and build essentials are required if you want to build this yourself that's not what we're going to see in this video and actually we're going to install it through the package that is released as an npm package so for some reason i was not able to install this using yarn and i got some errors so by using npm itself i was able to install this so if i go to the vs code as you can see i've got a readme file on the remote linux access Veti directory which you can find on my github repository where i'll put the link on the description section down below so basically on this readme file i've got some example commands that we can run to make remote shell sessions through web interface so if i say node dash dash version you can see that i am on v18.0.0 .0 and by hitting npm i dash g Veti. so basically this will try to install globally the Veti package from npm if i hit enter this will go grab the latest version from the npm itself so as you can see it is now installed and ready to be used if i say Veti h i am able to see all the configurations and options that i can pass when running the Veti command so going back to the documentations we've got exact same output over here so the first column are the options that we can pass the description and the data type that we can pass to this option also we can pass the options when running the veti command or we can define a configuration file and define all the required options in that and by passing that configuration file to veti it will try to load all the options that we defined in that configuration file so basically what Veti does is it exposes a Linux shell over web UI and it will try to make an SSH connection to a remote server and will expose the session over web interface. So basically the difference with other tools that I've shown in this video series is that they try to make Linux shells on the exact same machine that they are running but Veti tool is trying to make an SSH connection from the machine that it is running to a remote linux server so we can define things like dash dash conf to pass in the configuration file to load the configuration from it also if we want to expose this on https we have to pass in the dash dash ssl dash key dash dash ssl dash cert to define the key and cert files for https which is highly recommended if you want to expose this on your infrastructure so next we have the dash dash ssh host if we don't pass this it will try to connect to local host which is in most cases 
not the thing that we want so actually by passing localhost as the ssh host veti will try to make an ssh session in the exact same machine that it is running on but the point is that the ssh server tool should have to be installed on exact same machine so by saying ssh port we define the port to veti to try to connect to and SSH user to define the user to use when connecting to SSH server. Also by passing SSH out, which will default to password, we can use the public key. So Veti will try to use the SSH keys to connect to SSH server. So just to test this, I'm going to go back to terminal over here. And if I copy paste this command by simply saying Veti dash dash SSH dash host, and this is the IP address for the server that I'm trying to connect using Veti. So if I hit enter, I'll go to the browser, hit localhost on port 3000 and slash Veti. I am able to access the session that Veti created through web interface. So because I haven't defined the dash dash SSH user, it is asking me for the user. I'll hit enter and because the default value for SSH auth is set to password it is asking for password despite that I can connect to this server through my SSH key so if I put in my password I'll hit enter and I'm inside the remote server through web browser so by passing the dash dash SSH pass we can define the password for the Veti to use and not ask for it when we try to connect to our remote server. But the point is that we should have the SSH pass package installed on our machine. So by using SSH key, we can define the path for the private key for Veti to use to create the SSH connection. Also, we've got configurations like dash dash base or dash B to change the base path that we used in this example the veti to our custom path value and by passing the dash dash port and dash dash host we're able to change the port and the host that the veti web service will try to listen on so as the last point i'm going to show you guys how to run the veti as a docker container so actually we'll get to have the exact same usage but through a docker container so I'll hit Ctrl C and over here I'm going to copy paste this command over here which tries to create a docker container that will expose the port 3000 from container to outside network so we'll be able to access this port and as a result the service inside it from outside network. The image that we'll use is veti oss slash veti and again we'll use the dash dash sh dash host and i'll pass the ip address for my remote server so if i hit enter of course if you don't have the image installed on your machine it will first go ahead and download the image and then create your container again if i go to localhost port 3000 hit refresh on slash veti you can see that i get the exact same result that i had without docker container so i'll define my username and my password again you can see that i am inside remote server so that's all for this video i hope you learned something new in this one and of course do you have in mind if you want to use these services in your infrastructure you have to make it as secure as possible by enabling tls and maybe putting this service behind a web server like for example nginx and having restrictions like restricting ip addresses and things like that also if you want to learn about how to enable those features in nginx I've got a whole playlist about it. You can find the link in the description section down below. Also, don't forget to watch the other videos in this mini video series about the tools that enable Linux remote shell access. So I'll put all the links down in the description section. And if you have any questions and any recommendations, just go ahead and ask me in the comment section down below. So that's all for this video. And with that, I hope to see you in the next videos.